Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm going to be giving you some tips for painting white fur. I'm going to be talking about using acrylic paint but a lot of these are transferable for other media and this is Daisy who is my friend's cockapoo. She is partly white, I think she's got like some brown and grey in her fur but she is for all intents and purposes of this video a white cockapoo and she is just adorable so that is what I'm going to be painting and I'm just going to be giving you some tips on how to paint white fur because white fur can be quite tricky to paint and it's quite hard to paint and I'm just painting on an A6 canvas board because I have a few of them and I just wanted to do a small cute painting of my friend's dog so that is what we're doing because you know that part of my branding is making fan art of people's pets. So now that's out of the way let's get into the tips for painting white fur. So my first tip for you is to study the colours of the fur and you might think that's a little bit silly because you're thinking it's a white dog or it's a white cat, it's white. But you would be surprised at how many colours are in white fur. So a good way to kind of study this is to get some pictures of some white animals, some white cats or dogs, and use a colour picker tool on your PC or laptop. And you can just do this even in Microsoft Word if you don't have anything fancy, because most programs have a colour picker. You can just pick the colour on the fur and it will surprise you how off white it is compared to white. So that would be my tip for you is to study quite a few different white furs and see what colours are in them before you even start painting and you can do this with your reference photo. You might think it's cheating to use the colour picker but if you're just using it for studying purposes and to train your eye into seeing the different colours in fur I think it's perfectly fine and it will really help you understand what colours there are in the fur. So for Daisy for example she's got quite a lot of brown in her fur. It might have been the lighting in the reference photo but that doesn't matter. She's got quite a bit of brown on her face or like creamy colours rather than white and in her body it's a more of a grey in the shadow so that is what I have done here. So my second tip for you is to work with layers and I do have a separate video on this for acrylic painting but this would work if you're using colour pencil and markers as well. So work with layers and use your darker colours first so build up the darker tones to build the contrast and then add the lighter colours the creams and the whites on top. And working with layers is really, really helpful because you can block out your colours first, block out your shadows, and then add your details on top. So always work with layers, especially with acrylic paint. My third tip for you is to not use black to mix a grey. And that is one of the things that I kind of live by. I don't like using black in paintings. I just don't like it, I just haven't done it because my secondary school art teacher wouldn't let us use it and that's kind of stuck with me and I do agree, I think it's partly out of habit that I do it but I do agree that it's good. So instead of using black to mix grey, I use brown and blue paint. So you can mix the brown and blue together to make grey scale and I also have a video on this as well on how to use colour pencil to make grey scale so I will leave a link to that up above and down below if you are interested. But I use brown and blue to get a grey scale and if you're using a brown and mixing it over your white or your cream colours then you're getting a warmer shadow, a warmer tone and which I used in Daisy's face and blue will give you a cooler colour which I used a bit more blue in the brown shading in her body just to give it that bit of contrast. So use blue and brown rather than black in your grey parts of the fur and I also did the blue and brown technique in the eyes and the nose as well. There is no black paint on this painting. And if you would like me to do a video on how to paint black fur without using black, do let me know in the comments below because I think it would make a nice partner video to this one. So my next tip for you is to suggest the fur rather than paint each hair. And this is kind of true for whatever fur you're painting, not just white fur. And if you're doing hair as well, you don't want to draw or paint every little strand of fur because that's going to drive you mad and take you a very, very, very long time. It's much better to suggest it. So suggest the clump of fur, painting clumps rather than single bits of hair and use your paintbrush to determine the direction. So if you look on my painting around the eyes, for example, I kind of arched the brush strokes to make it look like the fur is going in certain directions. And on her body, I've made it a little bit more haphazard and mixed match because it's kind of shorter fur on her body a little bit and it's just a little bit more kind of clumpy because that's how a cockapoo fur is. Whereas on her face, it's a little bit longer and has more of a direction. 
So really think about your brush strokes when you are looking at the direction and don't paint individual bits of fur. In art sometimes, even if you're looking at pure realism, in a sense, it's much better sometimes to suggest things rather than make it exact because that is a bit more creative in my opinion. But this painting that I'm doing is more semi-realistic, it isn't realism. But if you are doing realism, you might want to concentrate a little bit more on finer clumps of fur rather than bigger clumps that I've done. And my last tip for you, again, this kind of works with any colour of fur, not just white fur, but to use detail brushes. So in my earlier layers, I used thicker brushes and just blocked out the colours and then my brushes got smaller as I worked up. And for your final layers of your details, you are going to use your white paint for this to add the really the highlights and add the white parts. So this is more true on the top right of Daisy's face and in the bottom right as well. So just add some fine details and some sort of stray hairs as well. Again, you don't want to do too much of this. You don't want to do every single stray hair, but doing a few little detail hairs will really bring your painting to life. So those are my tips for painting white fur. I hope you find them useful. And like I said, if you would like another video on how to do black fur without using black, let me know in the comments below and I might do one because I think that would work quite nicely with this one. But if you are new here, my name is Katie. Welcome. I make art videos. I have quite a few acrylic painting videos. There is a playlist that this is part of and I will leave a link up above and down below. I also do challenges. I also have a little mouse character called Charlie who I make quite a few videos on. There is also a playlist of him. But do have a look around if you like this video and subscribe and also hit the notification bell because my upload schedule is a bit sporadic. I kind of just upload when I have time and when I want to. So if you hit the notification bell, you won't miss out on any future videos. And if you like this video, you know, emotionally, please do leave it a like down below as that really does help me out. But that is really all I've got to say. I'm really quite pleased with how this turned out. I'm not sure if I did one too many layers or not. I'm not sure if she looked better in the layer before the last one or the last layer, but I am really pleased with how this piece turned out and I really enjoy painting animals, especially people's pets because people have really cute pets. But that's all I've got to say for this video, so I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.